Scrappy yells on the track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for another, come on, son, the podcast. That's right. My name is Ed Lover. Of course, you know that. And this is being brought to you by CigarsInternational.com. Go to CigarsInternational.com for all of your cigar needs, all of them. Just go to CigarsInternational.com. That's all you have to do. CigarsInternational.com will hook you up. And now when you go in there, if you're buying anything like a new humidor or or you need a cutter, or punch, or a lighter, or an ashtray, or a great box of cigars, when you get ready to check out, right? When you get ready to check out, put in Ed 10 off. That's E-D, the number 10, one zero, O-F-F. If you put in Ed 10 off, you get 10% off your entire purchase. And I thank you to Cigars International for being a title sponsor of uh, this come on son of the podcast don't forget add 10 off okay for 10 percent off your entire purchase now today is a special day for me because i want to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart which is yom tv raps we just had the 30th anniversary of the yom, of yom tv raps we had a big ass concert in brooklyn new york um on june 1st and man i mean people came out in droves i mean cool dj red alert was there Molly Maul was there. Uh, the guy who really, really in New York City um, had video music box. That's Uncle Ralph McDaniels. He's celebrating his 35-year anniversary. And that was a video show that we all watched like five years before Yom TV Raps even came on the air. So I had Ralph McDaniels there. We had Onyx there. All three members of Onyx performed. We had Special Ed there. We had Nice and Smooth. They bought the IOU dances. And when I was coming up, the IOU dances was everything. Like, every time you went to a concert or you saw a show, somebody had dances. And they had the IOU dances on the stage with them. I mean, gee, who was it? The Foosh Nickens performed. Lars Professor from Main Source performed. Uh, he did Looking at the Front Door and You Faking the Funk. He brought out Neek the Exotic. The Juice Crew performed. Big Daddy Kane. Uh, MC Shan. Roxanne Shante, uh, uh, Craig G, Molly Mall, Kooji Rap. It was it was insane. EPMD came out. They brought out K Solo. The brand Nubians were there. They performed. Um, the Beat Nuts was there. They performed. Positive K performed. Uh, the Far Side performed. It was just one great performance after another. Young Black Teenagers Flavor Flav performed. Yo Yo opened the show up. She performed, and MC Light performed. And Light is absolutely one of the best performers I've seen in a long time. And she looked good. And not don't even let me forget to tell you that Rock Eric B and Rockham, Dougie Fresh, and Karis One shut shit down. Like Karis One fucked that whole spot up. And Fat Joe was supposed to perform, but we ran out of time, so Fat Joe came out with Karis One. And back KRS one the whole time he was performing, and everybody lost their goddamn minds. Now let me get back to this young lady by the name of MC Light. MC Light and I have been friends for uh, like, come on, like at least thirty years. At least thirty years. I've known MC Light, and whenever I'm on the radio, and I do a top five of anything, if I go, who's the top five uh, rappers? female rappers of all time light is always at the top of everybody's list like when light came through we had never heard anything like her before we had never seen anything like that before like when light first came out i thought light was a fucking boy i ain't even gonna lie because her vocal tone was so different than any other vocal tone like we had salt and pepper already we had we had you know like like um roxanne shante we had sparky d we had Pebbly Pool. I mean, I believe Sweet Tea came out before Light too. But you always knew that they were females. Like you already knew that Salt and Pepper were females because when they did the Showstopper, they said they named Cheryl and Sandy. So you already knew that they were females. But when you heard Light, if you think of the, the name Light, and you think of L Y T E, if you think of M C Light, 
MC Light could be a guy. There is a guy actually from down south that does a lot of the uh, concerts. His name is MC Lightfoot, and that's the dude. So Light could have actually been a guy. And her vocal tone, when I first heard Cram to Understand You, I was like, oh, man, that dude is is dope until I realized what the story was all about, that she was, it was a girl talking about a guy. I just thought that MC Light was dope, and everybody thinks MC Light is dope. There's nobody that doesn't think MC Light is dope. Light is definitely at the top of everybody's list and a friend of mine for a long, long, long time with a stellar career. I'm in Chicago now on the radio, um, 104.39. Chicago's number one for throwbacks. And Light is actually the voice of this radio station. She's done the voice of Brat Dolls. She's done everything that you could possibly do in such a short period of time in her career. And 30 years to me is not a long time, so... I just love light so much, man, that I wanted to have an opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with her. So I did just that. So right here on Come Outside the Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, MC Light. Joining me inside of the studio here at Intercom, where we work at, is whenever I do a top five list of female rappers, she always comes in at either one or 1A. It's all, you're, you're never lower than 1 or 1A, and it doesn't matter what city I'm in. I've worked in New York. I've worked in L.A. I've worked in Atlanta, and now I'm working here in Chicago, and she's always 1 or 1A. Ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable mm. MC Light. How Thank are you? you? I am great. How does Thank that feel you. for people to think of you as the number one of all, and this is always of all time? Well, well, first off, I have to consider who's doing, who's putting on the contest or the competition, and that is Ed Lover. And so when people come, when they call in to weigh in on a topic from Ed Lover, they got to come real. So I'm expecting that they're going to be hip hop and that they're going to know the beginnings. In but the it feels of, great. And the body of work. Yeah. It has to feel fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and after all this time, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what voiceovers that you do, like you, you are the voice of 104.3 Jams mm -hmm. for us, you're still an MC. Why I'm are you still, still an, an MC? MC? Because I love it. You know, like people, I, someone, someone just asked me, when will you, does an artist have a time when they should stop? And I go, not if they enjoy what they do. Not, they should keep going. Even, see, my thing is, I'm doing it for me anyway. So it doesn't matter how much I get paid. It doesn't matter who else hears it. It doesn't matter, you know, it's just, it's what I love to do. Uh, syncopating lyrics to a rhythm, to a beat is just in my heart. When did you start this? When did this whole I want to be an MC thing start for MC Light? Uh, you know, I got a little taste of it, I think, when I heard, like, a Sha Rock from the Funky 4 Plus One More. Okay. And that had to be, like, 77 or 8 or something like that. I heard a cassette while I was in Harlem. Uh -huh. And but I was like, ooh, maybe I could. And then it kind of dissipated. But when I heard Salt and Pepper, that was it was over. What was it about? Salt and pepper that made you say it just was so gangster. It was first off, it was the song called Showstoppers. Okay, where they were dissing Dougie and Slick Rick, and just the rhymes and them over that beat. I just, I, it just captivated me, and I said, you know what, I'm gonna have something to say, and once I have something to say, I'm gonna try to get it out there. You have a unique voice. Um, people tell me I have a unique voice. Like mm -hmm. they could not recognize me, mm -hmm. but when they hear me speak, then yeah. they're like, that's Ed Lover. Right. You have a very unique voice. You don't sound like the average female MC sounds. Like there's a lot of young ladies out there mm -hmm. that's trying to rhyme now, and then I'm hearing them. And I was like, you sound like every other female MC, but mm. you don't. How did you find your voice as an MC? You know, um, I didn't try to do anything else but it, but me, and just speak. And matter of fact, I remember there were certain like you know. Uh, hip-hop connoisseurs that when they heard my voice was like oh it's too monotone like what like where's whatever they wanted they wanted me to put the oomph in it and really for me it was just about speaking over that beat I cram the understand you which was the first song and as a matter of fact it was red alert was one of the people 
while I was on stage at the Latin Quarters, he told Nat Robinson, "Oh, she's not gonna make it. Like she, what? She's just talking over the <laughs> over the music." And I guess that was my thing to just talk to people. Was Rock Kim out already? Yeah. Because Rock Kim was really the first MC that I ever heard. Uh, rhyming and rapping and being an MC at that time had so much. Mm. Yeah. Run DMC Nelly was, Mel. yeah, <laughs> hurrah, Run DMC, <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, Everybody was kind of yelling, even mm -hmm. LL was yelling, mm -hmm. you know. LL Cool J is hot as hell. Mm -hmm. And Rock Kim was the first male smooth. that I've ever heard come out smooth. Yeah. And then even Salt and Pepper came out. They were Salt and Pepper's here. We're right. here to rap you. And then when you came with Cram to understand you, you were laid back like Rock Kim. Yeah. It was almost like I thought you were sitting down. Right. Doing a record. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's what Red Alert thought too. And he just was like, this not work. But I think for me, and it's funny that you said Rakim because I was in Hamill's projects in Far Rockaway at my grandfather's house. And I was sitting in the window of the third floor. And this guy named Supreme Allah, and on and on. You know, it's yeah, one like of those. 10 yeah, names, right? a lot he of had this and big old radio. And he, had it out in the middle of the courtyard. And when I listened, it was Eric B for president, but I didn't know the song yet. But when I heard it, I was like, what is this? So by the time I got down there, Showstoppers was on. Okay. So I was like, oh man, this is it right like here. Like there are females actually doing this. Yeah. And, and Showstopper had that much of an effect on you that it made you want to do it? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to do it anyway, but I think Salt and Pepper made me believe I could. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Definitely icons in their own right. Mm -hmm. Definitely icons. Where did I cram to understand you come from? It a long it was a long story, actually. It was like a it was a poem and I um had it all written out. That's why there they're like there's no rhyme or reason to its format. I think like the verses are just all over the place in terms of time. I think the first verse is like 24 <laughs> bars and that, you know what I mean? Right. Like it's all over the place. But it was just a story that I had put together with real, uh, not real circumstances, maybe for someone else. It mm -hmm. wasn't my life, it was fictitious. But I put ro the roller skating rink, you know, Empire Roller Rink. Yeah, big Brooklyn. roller rink in New York City. Yeah. Empire Roller Rink was a roller rink in Brooklyn, New York, where everybody came to Everybody. Skate. So I just tried to put real you know, landmarks in it so uh -huh. that when people heard it, they could feel attached. And they did feel attached mm -hmm. to it. Was was that something that you had before you may, met Nate Rob? Um, yes. You already had it. Well, that whole album was in my rhyme book already. Paper Thin, Light as a Rock, like all of that stuff. The only thing that wasn't in there was Cha Cha Cha. Really? And that that's like, Cha 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 was actually the second album anyway. Right. Yeah. So now there's a lot of Sparky D's. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of D's. There's a lot of E's. <laughs> Sweet T's. Sweet T's. Sweet mm -hmm. T was out. Mm -hmm. um, when Salt and Pepper first started, they were Sandy B. Uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. they, and, and because they became Salt and Pepper because they said, because one was light and the other Ooh, one was darker, uh -huh. in the Showstopper record, they said the Salt and Pepper MCs. Mm -hmm. And then they changed their name to Salt and Pepper. It mm -hmm. wasn't originally Salt and Pepper. Right. But you could have came Sandy out. Sandy D. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> Sandy uh -huh. D. Sandra Denton, that's uh -huh. Pepper. Uh -huh. You could have came out with one of those D names, just like anybody else, or C or B or Ski. <laughs> Remember, there's a lot of skis. Back in those days, I was right. actually Eddie D. Okay. <laughs> Back in those days, rhyming in the park. Right. Where did light come from? And why <laughs> L-Y-T-E instead of L-I-G-H-T? That's so funny. When it all started for me, uh, you know, in elementary, I was Lana D. Okay, so you <laughs> right. had a D. So, yeah, everybody yeah. had a Lana D. Lana D. Everybody had a D. Chuck uh, D. Right. Um, I think with light, I got it from the Dictionary of Thoughts. And it's a bunch of philosophers and, you know, they take a word and break it down. And light was just so positive. And I said, well, I can't. I don't want to spell it like a light bulb <laughs> so I said let me just change it up and I did and and as a matter of fact it was just light and then when we got the first record I looked at the label and it was an MC before it and I was like what you know I said to Nat I was like what's this about he said well the label said you needed a title and we didn't want to make it lady light we didn't want to make you know make it 
anything but MC because that's what you do. Yeah, and that's exactly yeah, what's Yeah, I wrong. think Milk might have been responsible for, for that. For MC Light? Mm-hmm. That is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You told me once before when I interviewed you that you kind of worked with somebody on your craft before you ever went into the studio. Yeah, totally. George Lucian, which is Full Force's father, uh-huh. used to come by, you know, maybe every other Saturday morning, and I would rehearse just rehearse your rhymes? I know. I would I would sing uh, rap salt and pepper songs. All day? Uh, well, you know, for, for about, a few hours? For about four hours. What, 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 what do you think in the in the in the long run and looking back at it? What do you think that did for you? It made me confident. It it, it brought about a confidence and then it also taught me to, you know, speak from here mm-hmm. as opposed from my throat, you know. Um it just taught I tell you what, by the time I got into First Party Music in Staten Island to audition, basically, is what it was, they were like, oh, my God, she's ready. Let's go. Just like that. Right into the studio to start. I went I went in the first time. Uh, I opened up the rhyme book. They said, listen to this beat. You got something for this? And he, they, I think he might have played the beat for Paper Thin. And I started rhyming Paper Thin. They said, okay, that'll go to that. Okay, you got something for this? Okay, what's that right there? I said, oh, this is a story I crammed to understand you. And Milk just made the beat right there on the four-track task cam. And, and the rest is kind of history. Yeah, the rest is history now. From what people talk about true MCs, like to be the greatest, Mm -hmm. they say you have to go through certain things, right? Mm -hmm. They have, first of all, they say whatever sex you are, if you're a man, the guys want to have to want to be you and the women want you, Mm -hmm. have to want you. Mm -hmm. As a female, you have to have the guys want you Mm -hmm. and the women want to be you. Mm -hmm. But there's a pivotal moment in every great MC's history Mm -hmm. that defines them, and that's the battle. And you had an epic battle with Antoinette. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How did that start? Oh, goodness. Uh, we were well, well, for people in Chicago that, right. that really don't know about Antoinette, tell them where Antoinette is from. And Well, Antoinette is part of uh, Herbie Lovebug's camp. Okay. You know, um, so Which Queens, was Salt and Pepper, uh, Kid and Play, Kwame, Kwame. Yeah, all of those cats over there. And so I think from what my understanding is, Milk and Giz had spoke to her beloved bug about doing an answer to Top Billin and calling it Stop Illin. Okay. And it was actually supposed to be the three young ladies that made up the dance crew. And I can't remember the dance crew, but it was Hi Hat. Yeah. Who, by the way, is like one of the Greatest best choreographers, choreographers ever. 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 Um, did all of Missy's stuff. You don't stuff. know it, uh, Google it. Yes. Yes. So Hi Hat, Swatch, and then there was one other person. Okay. So they were supposed to do this. Shout out to Swatch, too. Yeah. And I want you to reiterate that Hi Hat did most of the choreography for Missy Elliott, mm-hmm. who's a great friend of yours, but we'll mm-hmm. get to that later. Okay, okay. go ahead. Okay, so, so in any case, um, they were supposed to do an answer called Stop Illin. So it was just supposed to breathe life, more right. life into Top Billin okay. after it started waning down off of the charts or whatever. And so they didn't do it. And it kept taking longer and longer and longer. And so I guess Milk and Giz thought that Herbie Lovebug just said, forget it. But one day we're driving in from a show we were doing in uh, Boston. And we tap in and hear Magic. and he, And he's playing this song called I Got an Attitude. Okay. And one of the lines is something about your bodyguard and something and they, you know, Milk's eyes got wide like, oh man, they did. They And at the time was Gene that bodyguard, Big Gene? Uh, yeah, I guess maybe that's who, who they were Who bodyguard about. for you for a long time. Right. Six degrees of separation. Gene and I worked together when I was a high school security officer. That's right. At Andrew Jackson High School. Right, and he brought you on tour with us. That's right, right. absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. it's a very, very small... Uh, Light and I so- toured together for, for, for a lot of years, for mm-hmm. a lot of people don't know, mm-hmm. with um, Criss Cross. Mm-hmm. We toured with Criss Cross, and I just had happened to host one of Criss Cross shows. Far Side didn't show up. Mm-hmm. They asked me, could I waste some time? Long story <laughs> short, I end up on tour with Criss Cross and MC like Great and, Times. Too. Exactly. And then we've got many tie-ins. Yes. Because then there was Todd, who yes. I used to date. And yeah. you guys were roommates for a minute. And like broke every barrier down with Yo! MTV Raps. Absolutely. And all of the work that you guys did over there. But so anyway, they say, Light, you got a disser. 
And I'm like, what? They said, because we're guys. We can't, you know, we can't come back mm -hmm. with a disc. So I say, okay. And literally, we go off the road in Boston straight to Mary Street to a studio called INS. Mm -hmm. And that's where Hot Damn Ho 10% Disc was born. <laughs> did, did you even know her? Uh, no. Had, no, had not had even no met problems. her. No problems. We thinking that maybe y'all ran into each other at Latin Quarter, which is one of the most famous hip hop clubs in New York at the no. time. She said something wrong. You know, in hip hop, when you're young, you don't need a reason. <laughs> 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 at least you didn't then. You know, it's just right. like, okay, they told me I need to do it. I need to do it, so I did it. And then we wound up in a battle uh, at the World. Okay. Um, where we finally came sort of face to face mm -hmm. and battled off. And um, and then I didn't see her again for years until we just had a show. Some Oh, we had a show, all-female set in Atlanta. Okay. And she came and knocked on the door, and K-Rock came and said, Antoinette's at the door. And I was like, Antoinette? This was this, was this year, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. He was like, Antoinette. And I was like, I don't, who, Antoinette? He was like, Antoinette. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And she came in, and we talked, and it was as if a diss never happened. And I, that was really... That was really a moment, yeah. You know, for us to be able somebody to somebody should have recorded that moment for hip hop history. Yeah, that's right? the first well, time you guys had talked since the world battle. Yes, that is absolutely amazing. Yes. How did you feel creating a line as an MC that lives on in infamy? You said, "Hot damn ho, here we go again." Yeah, and then Little Kim says, "Hot damn ho, here we go again," and that line is a line that. Anytime you put that record on, every female knows it. Right, right. Um, you know, at the time, I was just talking. It just and, and I had learned in a very short period of time that your first line of every verse should be monumental. Mm -hmm. and it, you can't just start talking. Like, it has to be something that a DJ wants to spin back. Right. And so uh, at the time, I was just. But you're so young. Like, how do you recognize that these things need to go into a record, right? So, mm -hmm. like, you had Paper Thin, mm -hmm. great record, incredible beat, mm -hmm. still rocks out crazy to this day. And then in the middle of this record, somewhere you go, hit the road, Sam, <laughs> and don't you come back no more, no more. Right. <laughs> a Ray Charles. Yeah, yeah. Why? You know, uh, that's the music I listened to growing up. And even in I'm Not Having It with Positive K, I right. think I stole a line from Dionne Warwick. Uh, I'm never going to fall in love again. Uh, Do you know the way to Santa Fe? Right. I'm going to get, whatever that song is. I took a line from that and threw it in there. It, it happens often. But you know who else it happens with? Oh. KRS-One. Yes. Yes, he will take a... Ooh, what's the matter with you, MC uh, Molly Ma? Uh, don't you know ooh, that, that it's out, out of touch? touch. Part yeah. of Billy Joel's record, Ex right? Exactly. That was something that was going on in hip-hop for a long time, even from the street MCs. Mm. You know, Cold Crush used to do it all the time. Uh -huh. the tail, you know, Gilligan's Island or right, whatever. Right, right. And it just amazed me that you would do that and mm. take that line mm -hmm. from a Ray Charles record, hit the road, Jack, and mm. just throw it right into the middle of a song, and it becomes <laughs> so memorable. If mm. you look back on your very first album, what is your favorite song off that album? Mm. Very, mm, mm. Uh, I might, I might have to say, mm, I might have to say 10% disc. 10% disc? I think so. Paper thin for me. Mm -hmm. And then you shot the video mm -hmm. and you pulled up to the train station in a Jetta. <laughs> Do you know how bad I wanted a Jetta when really? I saw that? I, I just I saw. I had to get me a Jetta. Jetta was hard. That's funny. I just saw a new campaign that said, better get a Jetta. I was like, <laughs> okay. And you had the Jetta back in the yeah. day. You had it way back then. Your career started off with such a blast and it's continued for so very long. I mean, you've worked with everybody. How did you and Missy hook up to work together? That was, uh, it's so funny because, um, uh, the record label that I was on, they Electra want, at right, the time. They wanted to sign her, and then Puffy, who was doing the remix, also wanted to sign her. Okay. So everybody was vying for her to be a part of Cold Rocker Party, the remix. Right. And so she missed the first studio time. I was like, oh, okay. 
Then she missed the second one. I was like, she didn't come to the studio. She didn't make it. So I called up Puff and I was like, well, listen, hey, if she doesn't want to do it, let's just move forward. No, 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 no. She wants to do it. She just was dealing with some stuff. She's gonna be there. So the third time I got, by the time I had gotten there, her verse was already laid, and she had already put the. Uh, all of the singing around right. and, and she was basically just sitting there waiting for me so i was like okay great <laughs> this, this is awesome tell me about the brandy record the remix the brandy record uh they called me up the record label did because yes. we were on the same label it's the i want to be down remix ladies and gentlemen yeah, we're we were, talking about we were on the same label and they called me up and asked me did i want to get busy and i was sure i went to the studio and i was just there with the producers and I heard it, and I um, I laid my verse before anyone else. I didn't hear anybody else's verse. And I just said, I want to be first. So I put mine first. I wanted to stay first. And they said, okay, and it just went from it, there. Did you have any idea who else was going to be on that record? Uh, I did. They already told you? They had already told me, but, you know, no one had um, put their verse down yet. Okay, so you demanded, yeah. I have to be first. Well, yeah, I just wanted to be first. Why? Um, because you either want to be first or you want to be last. <laughs> and I was like, let me just take first position. Right. And and I wrote it like it was the beginning of a song. Okay. So like that, those first lines to me are always so important. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine that verse last? No. Or second? No. 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 It's it's, it's just first. Like, like it's almost a, <laughs> it's almost like a perfect yeah hip hop record. Like you know, sometimes I think about music. And I and I and I look at these records and I say, "Gee, if if you switch something around, this record wouldn't be as fantastic as it is." Like if you look at scenario, if you if Bust does mm, not last yeah. on the scenario remix, it's not the same record. No, it's if not. If Fife is not there to say Bo knows this and, and Bo, Bo knows that, that but Bo, Bo don't know Jack because Bo can't rap, <laughs> right, it's right. not the same record. If you put Charlie Brown right. in front of him, yeah, and 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 that's also true with you and a, and a lot of the stuff that you've done. Has there ever been a record that you listen to now and say, man, I wish I could have mm, something did off. something different? Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I think um, for the most part, when I approach that whole you know, first and second album, it was just me writing like poetry. Mm -hmm. So I was taking poetry and making it go to music mm -hmm. as opposed to writing to the music, which is okay. very, which is very different. And so there are some syncopation things that I would change. That you cringe at? Well, I don't know that I cringe, Okay, but it's like, Oh, I, I could have landed that a little bit more in the pocket. Poor yeah. Georgie is one of my favorite records that you've ever done. Thank you. I love Poor Georgie. Thank Poor Georgie you. has a message to it. Mm -hmm. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. um, you sound amazing. Your syncopation, your rhymes are incredible on all of your music. But for me, I really love Poor Georgie. Mm -hmm. How did that record come together and who picked the sample? Well, what's crazy is, um, you know, I worked a lot with... Um, with Parrish back in the days. Okay. And we were really good friends. As a matter of fact, we we met kind of when our first songs hit and we were on a lot of college shows together. Okay. And this is when Eric Sermon was actually in school and couldn't perform. So Paris was doing both of their parts. Oh wow. Yeah. Paris <laughs> Smith from EPMD. Exactly. He he was doing both of their parts. So in, in any case, I um <clears throat> excuse me. Um his engineer, Doc, let me hear a track. It okay. was like, uh, what you think about this? And as soon as I heard it, I know Toto. I, I loved that song growing right. up as a kid. I was like, I got to become a part of this song somehow. And he already had the samples in it and everything. And it just made me feel like this is a really messed up story. It has to be sad. Because yeah, it my just, world is empty without you. you yeah, babe. it just felt so sad. So I was like, okay, let anything that could ever happen <laughs> bad happen uh -huh. to poor Georgia. Yeah, absolutely. And so after putting it all together, it that song really saved that album. 
because mm. that album, you know, I went to L.A. I, I wanted some BBD producers to work on some stuff. I was really stretching myself. Okay. And my audience didn't really want that stretching. They were like, no, we want to keep you here with something that sounds familiar. Okay. And so I thank Doc for, for giving me that track. It, even He was the engineer. Nobody expected him to come out of his pocket with a with a hit like yeah, that. Yeah, and a big hit that it was for you. Mm -hmm. You recently got married. Congratulations. Thank you. I love seeing you in love. <laughs> Is that I right? You, I love seeing you in love. I've known you for so long. And I have so many more things I could talk to you about, but we press for time. Yes. So I will just say thank you, MC Light. Thank you. It is Ed. always a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one female artist of all times when it comes to hip hop. You're not going to find nobody better. Oh, Please don't you. throw these new jacks in my face <laughs> because they do not have the voice. They do not have the style. Mm. And they definitely do not have the rounds of Lana D right here, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Yeah, my girl, you. my friend, my homie. Come on, son. Thank you, MC Light, for being in the building with me today, man. It is, how much more shit can I say about Light, man? Light is so dope. And congratulations, too, again, because Light just got married. Congratulations, she got married. Uh, and she you knows she used to date my boy Todd. Todd was actually, when Todd and Light were dating, Todd was my roommate. We had a two-bedroom apartment with one freaking bathroom. Go figure. We had a two-bedroom apartment in Jersey City, New Jersey, with one bathroom and three fucking floors. Like, this is the craziest thing. We had a loft apartment, and we had a spiral staircase in the living room that went up to a private roof deck, and then we had the living room, the kitchen, in the dining room up there, and downstairs you walk down the spiral staircase. It was two bedrooms and only one fucking bathroom. But you could come into the apartment on two different floors. So if we just wanted to go straight into our bedrooms, we come in, I believe, on the fifth floor. And if we wanted to go to the living room, we could take the elevator. If you were already downstairs, so I'm going to the living room, you take the elevator to the sixth floor and go right into the living room and the kitchen area. This is the weirdest place. But that's when they were dating, and uh, we all, you know, went to... Um, Jamaica together. We took MTV raps to uh, Montego Bay for Reggae Sun Splash, and Light came down there with us. We had a, we had a good time, and then we toured with Light and Crisscross. So Light and them had uh, their own crew, and 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 Jermaine Dupri and me and Crisscross and Todd and Wildstyle called ourselves the House Gang, and we used to throw water and have water gun fights with them and do all kind of shit with them. So I've known Light. I've toured with Light. We've been friends for so, so many years. So I just wanted to say thanks to Light for coming in and being in the, um, you know, being on the podcast today because it's hard to, she's so busy, it's hard to nail her down sometimes. So getting on the podcast meant a lot for me. Y'all keep God first. Everything else will fall into place. I'll talk at you, with you, to you, and about your ass on next podcast. Thanks to Krista Hayes, super producer, for putting this whole shit together, all right? Y'all be good. If you can't be good, be careful, all right? I'll see you next time on Come On, Sad. The podcast. Now get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Bitch. This Ed Lover podcast is being done in conjunction with Cigars International. Make sure you check out CigarsInternational.com for all your cigar needs. This episode of Come On, Son, the podcast is produced and engineered by co-executive producers Kimana Paulus and Krista Hayes. Recorded at Mean Street Studios in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, this is an official Loudspeakers Network podcast. Network podcast.